the last conservative British Defense Secretary, the Earl of Minto, said that this weapon could revolutionize warfare. A pretty blatant statement on such a topic and somehow it feels a bit strange to use the word revolutionize in the context of war. But since war is here, I think it's important to talk about it instead of turning a blind eye. To be precise, it is about one of the British military's latest developments, the Dragon Fire laser weapon. It was tested at the beginning of this year and it's said to be able to hit a one pound coin at a distance of one kilometer. The British government wants to provide several million pounds to make it ready for war. Let's find out what the Dragonfire is all about, what its field of application is and whether these weapons are actually revolutionizing warfare. And with that, welcome to the German science guy, Jacob here. And in Germany, we say Los geht's. The idea of using lasers as weapons is actually pretty old. The first laser was presented in 1960. In the 1980s and 1990s, laser weapons research got underway. During this time, the United States carried out intensive research into laser weapons in order to use them to protect against missiles. Adjusted for inflation, the United States spent a bit more than $3.1 billion in today's money on this in 1989. They were not successful, but it certainly shows the hope that they had in this technology. The first successful and theoretical operational laser weapons were not available until the early 2010s. In the meantime, a number of countries are already using them. Germany has tested them as an air defense system on ships and Israel wants to use such a weapon against aerial attacks soon. But before we look at some more facts about the weapon, let's take a look at how it works in the first place. Dragonfire, which is the name of the weapon, is a so-called laser-directed energy weapon system. Directed energy weapons are weapons that use microwaves or light waves, for example. They are powered by electrical energy, but some have also been developed that obtain their energy from chemical reactions. When such a laser beam hits a target, it emits its energy to the target. The beam gets absorbed. This generates so much heat that the target gets damaged. Depending on where at the target this happens, it can lead to it getting destroyed. Detroit. The Dragonfire is a fiber laser. The name describes the main component of the laser already, a fiber. This optical fiber consists of quartz glass. These fibers get doped with atoms of rare earth like erbium. We'll come to what this is good for in a moment. This fiber is also surrounded by a cladding. This cladding is irradiated by our so-called diode laser, which has a lower power. In addition to the first cladding, there's also a second cladding that surrounds the fiber. This has an important function. It reflects the light from the diode laser back and forth through the fiber. As a result, the light repeatedly hits the core of the fiber in which the erbium atoms are located. Very roughly speaking, atoms consist of an atomic nucleus with electrons surrounding it. The electrons they are located in different orbitals around the atomic nucleus, the distance between which is fixed. In the ground state, the electrons are in a low orbital. If energy is added, they can switch to a higher orbital. However, they do not stay there for long. The electrons return to the ground state and then the excess energy is released in form of photons, which is radiation. And this is emission. When the light from the diode laser hits the erbium atoms, this is exactly what is happening. The electrons move to a higher orbital. When they then fall back to their ground state, radiation is emitted. But there's one important thing in particular here that is also the foundation for lasers. And here we go back to why the rare earth and the fiber are so important. Because every material has special properties in terms of the distance between the orbitals. And therefore also differences in the energy required to excite an atom and also what it emits again. I just described how this emission takes place, that is spontaneous emission, because the emission takes place somewhat delayed and spontaneously. But there's also a stimulated emission. In this case, the incident photon has exactly the right energy and when it hits the atom, it not only emits another photon with the same energy, but also the same phase, polarization and direction of propagation. And this is crucial because it allows the light in the laser to amplify and become so strong. What makes it special here is that the light of the diode the diode laser has a wavelength of 980 nanometer and it is precisely this energy from the light that the erbium atoms can absorb resulting in a stimulated emission. This stimulated emission then emits light at a wavelength of 1550 nanometer, making the laser more focused among other things. There's also a grating at both ends of the fiber. These gratings serve as a kind of mirror so that the light is reflected back and forth inside of the fiber. As a result, the reactions are repeated and more and more photons are released. However, one of the gratings allows some of the photons to pass through, that's the laser beam. 
Of course, this is only a rough functionality of Dragonfire. The exact way it works is not disclosed by the British Ministry of Defense. After all, it's still a weapon of war. However, little information can already be found. It was commissioned by the Ministry of Defense and it's the, the UK's first high power laser weapon. In future, it is to be used by the Army and Royal Navy for air defense. The exact range is of course not known, but it should be able to be used against all targets within visual range. The promised precision is probably the most sensational aspect. A one pound coin should be able to be hit at a distance of one kilometer. The Ministry of Defense says the laser should cut right through the target or cause its structure to fail. The target can also be tracked by the laser. According to a piece reporting on an early stage of the development, the weapon is said to have an output of 50 kilowatt. For comparison, a laser pointer has power of just one milliwatt. The power of the laser weapon is 50 million times higher. The laser's power will increase over time, so it could be significantly higher by now. The Ministry of Defense actually seems to have high hopes for this technology. Together with the industry, they have put over 100 million pounds into the project. In order to make the laser ready for use in war, the Ministry wants to make a few million more available. They also want to continue investing in such technologies and develop possible deployment plans. This naturally raises the question of why so much money is being invested and what advantages do laser weapons have? The biggest advantage is probably the price. It is said that the cost to shoot a shot is just about 10 pounds. By comparison, one shot of the Sea Viper missile, which is used in the Red Sea against drone attacks, costs 1 million pounds. That is already extremely expensive. Another example is Israel's Iron Dome defense system, which costs about 100,000 US dollars per interception. Other munitions also cost several thousands of euros. The Iron Beam laser weapon, which Israel could deploy soonish, is said to be able to destroy targets with in five seconds. However, it should also be noted that it's said to have a power of around 100 kilowatts, which is around twice as much as Dragonfire. This would also mean that people in zones of conflict would no longer be dependent on ammunition, but only on sufficient amounts of energy. This could also have logistical advantages and relieve the burden on the industrial complex. And in this context, the last British Secretary of State of Defense, the Earl of Minto, spoke of a revolution in zones of armed conflict. On one hand, because ammunition is no longer needed and on the other because precision should be able to reduce collateral damage. Such a big announcement from the last British Secretary of State for Defense already suggests what hope is being placed in this type of weapon. But there's still one or two points that could be a problem here and that brings us to the Große Aber that's German and gets translated into the big problem. First of all, if you don't want to miss any more videos on the channel, click on subscribe and ring the bell. So the big problem or the big problems, in principle, the property that makes lasers weapons so popular for use in war is also a disadvantage. Lasers are basically light, so no ammunition is needed and the cost of use is reduced. But the propagation of light or the laser beam can also be disrupted relatively easily. The atmosphere alone has a strong influence on the laser beam. How much depends on the weather and the time of the year and also differs between sea and land for example. A laser is therefore very susceptible to environmental factors and therefore not very flexible when it comes to the weather. Using light as a weapon actually has another disadvantage which some of you may have already thought of. This is the deflection of the laser beam by reflective surfaces. A decisive factor is the amount of energy that the target absorbs. A target that absorbs more energy from the laser beam is also destroyed more quickly. However, if a lot of light is reflected, less energy is absorbed. The laser would therefore lose its effect. However, it must be said that the effect can be reduced if light with longer wavelengths is used. In addition, some of the energy is always absorbed even with reflective surfaces, so in principle there is no such a thing as a perfect mirror. So if the laser is theoretically strong enough, it can still damage the target. Nevertheless, a reflective surface makes it more difficult to use. In addition, the beam must be directed at the target for a relatively long time in order to destroy it. With iron beam, this should take around 5 seconds, but the power is also significantly higher than that of the dragonfire. So it could take even longer for dragonfire, which could make it more difficult to hit fast targets. And one last problem is something that has been on my mind a lot lately, and that is the fact that it costs less to take a life in case of doubt, something that you see more and more often with the use of drones. With a laser, I still see the point that is probably mainly used for defense, but nevertheless, I wanted to bring up this thought here because it feels like it has hardly come up in the discussion about war lately and the human being, which every soldier is at the end, is overlooked. 
But what is the bottom line on this laser weapon? Overall, it can be said that there are still some challenges when it comes to the use of laser weapons. But the sheer amount of money that has been invested in these technologies over the years shows that experts have high hopes for them. Seen in this light, no pun intended, these weapons really do seem to be changing warfare, revolutionizing it perhaps simply the wrong word here. But what do you think about this? And what do you think about the discussion on topics such as weapons and war in society? I'm very curious to hear what you have to say as you now know my opinion and here's another video about the field where these ultra powerful lasers are also becoming increasingly important namely nuclear fusion. So take care, macht's gut, euer Jakob.